Hey guys, uh, so Matt's taking a little bit, but um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to drop it in the chat so that way we can answer your questions. And as you can tell, I'm actually a kangaroo right now. So we're having a onesie party. Kangaroo. I have a pouch, but you can't see it. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm a cat! Meow! <laughs> Steph actually got us these onesies. Uh, do you, was it by chance that you had a kangaroo before you got me cats? Yeah. Huh. Did you have a kangaroo before we had met? Yeah. Wow. This is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm Loki. She's uh, Skippy. And Kate is wearing one that looks like Tyson. So we're all here. I hope you've all at home worn your onesies. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great uh, weekend. Uh, let's see. We got a nice big chat room blowing up already. Now, we're going out in 1080 with super low lag, so hopefully I can see your comments uh, promptly. But I'll probably just answer them verbally rather than typing because it seems like when I click away from Steph's Skype window, she freezes. So this seems to be working. So first off, how are you, Stephanie? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, days are confusing because I'm working all the time. So I'm like, wait, it's a weekend. I'm supposed to relax now. Uh, why are you meant that. to start relaxing because it's quarantine? Why, why would that change anything? If the day ends in a Y, it's a work day, right? Yeah. So we're good. You're still working yeah. on yourself. So. I I, next, I have to say thank you to, is he in the room? Well, I know he's going to join us to Juan. Thank you, Juan. Uh, when he sent me a super chat a while back, this was the beer he asked me to pick up. Apparently, it's his favorite. It's a Hofbrau. And I found our little local bodega. I still love that word. We don't say bodega in Australia. Bodega had it, so I picked up a bottle. Um, did you... Oh, and I got one of these. They had this as well, Steph. So... Based on your recommendation, I want a mango. Yeah, <laughs> want a mango. <laughs> Boom. So it's a crisp, tropical, refreshing pale ale with mango. And I actually love a pale ale, so let's see. Uh, what are you guys at home having? Now, I do feel, it seems strange to say wearing a onesie live anyway, but I feel extra silly having the hood on. But anyway. Yeah, but then if you take it off, it's like, what are you wearing? Like the hood, I'm saying. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so I have... Oh, and I'm already getting questions streaming in. Thank you so much. Juan is, whether he's in the room... Oh, there he is. He's sending in questions. Um, so, last Monday when we had Steph in, I kind of dodged some gear questions. I feel like my audio is peaking. I'm just going to move this down my cat tummy a little bit. Um, but today I want to open it up. I, of course, I hope there'll be a nice mix of questions for Steph, Steph and I, and me. Uh, but if you do have gear questions for me, please try to make it specific and helpful. If you really just want a pie in the sky hypothetical, then yes, I'll answer it. I don't see the value in it personally, but I'll do it if you want. But it's more useful if you said, I own the D610, and I'm looking to get the D850, but I'm worried about the high ISO performance. Do you know how they compare? That's something specific I can help you with. Um, so, there we go. Oh, and Rusty and everyone else, you don't need to say the hashtag Ask Matt. It just helps us to find it. So, by the way, cheers, Steph. Cheers. Cheers, wifey. Cheers. And cheers, Lucky. <laughs> cheers, Timmy, at being at a real job. <laughs> yeah. He's working right now. Aww. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Cliff Lowry's in the chat. I'm so sorry, man. He's out of wine at the moment. That's terrible. Oh, shoot. Oh. Cliff, no. I'm sure that. Try Drizzly. There's an app that um, Chris, our mutual friend Chris, introduced me to. They'll deliver like a bottle of Moe to your door in 20 minutes. You'll be okay, Cliff. We'll get you through this, buddy. What? I mean, you pay for it. What's it called? Drizzly. It's like a, the bear, Grizzly, but with a D. Drizzly. So it's a drunk bear. Is that only for New York? I don't know. And I've never actually used it. I downloaded it, but we were at a photo shoot with him 
and Louisa and a couple of people at in a in Manha mm. Manhattan, and then suddenly bottles of champagne arrived, and that was thanks to Drizzly. Hola. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. So. Let me jump into okay. some of the questions that I had submitted from Instagram whilst the ones here ramp up. Do send in your questions, folks. We're here just to chat and answer questions, so don't be shy. This is your chance. Um, okay. Well, Steph isn't wearing any, but she does have some. Tom asks, what kind of frames for your eyeglasses do you currently own wear? Oh, um, I use... Um I mean, I have 2020. These are those glasses for that filter blue light. For obnoxious, pretty Asian girls who just want to wear frames to look smart. Yeah, we know. <laughs> oh, it's because, you know, I'm always looking at a screen. So, um, but I got these from Pixel Eyewear. Uh huh. Do you want to drop a link in the chat for them? Oh, yeah. I, could. Um, I find it a it's funny so question, but these are super dry, but not because I'm into the brand or into frames. They were, I always tend to get blue ones and in Australia with my health coverage I get two complete pairs of free glasses every year so when I go back I normally get a pair of reading glasses a pair of sunglasses and it's just covered by my plan so oh and non-polarized for the sunglasses if you're using LCD screens in the field that can be a real pain in the butt if you've got polarized lenses um, here's one that I, I assume is for me from BotGen Genbot, so maybe it's just spam. Um, how to overcome the sense of judgment with getting nude? Well, I don't know. It just was taking me so long to dry my clothes after every shower. I felt like eventually I had to. Actually, I probably did a nude shoot before Steph did, but I didn't feel shame about it. Did you ever feel shame or feel that you had to get over a sense of judgment about it? Um... I mean, I think starting out when you're thinking about doing implied or nude shoots, I, I, that's obviously a topic that you would probably have to think about yourself. Um, there's people that are ready. There are people that aren't comfortable. You kind of just have to go with your own comfortability that's levels. Yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I was, like, pretty okay because, uh, I mean human body in general i think is just very beautiful mm -hmm. it's very artistic it's i don't think it's like you can make an image with a model and have it very classy and you don't have to always have it imply sexuality so yeah there's actually a rich vein for conversation there probably to be better not over beers in onesies as a serious conversation because i agree with <laughs> most of what you said there but there's a couple of things there that Actually, I think if we're all honest and adults, I think we tend to take the sexuality out of nudity because we're calling it art, but it's really still there and everyone still knows it's there, but we say it's not there to make it a valid art form. But there's a reason they sculpted and painted nudes for hundreds of years, and it's not just art. Um, segwaying from that nice and neatly, John Tube 2 k is this Matt's girlfriend, right? I, if not, his girlfriend or wife should be worried with the amount of times he puts Steph on the show. In case you didn't hear the intro 10 minutes ago, where we said hi to my wife and to her boyfriend. No, I, I'm not sure if you know this actually, but most workplaces nowadays allow men and women to work together. So Steph oh and I gosh. are colleagues and friends and it's a strange wow, concept, but... Crazy. I actually even have more, I don't want to make you jealous, Steph, but I even have more female friends and colleagues that oh, I'm not having affairs what? with that can maintain I a mean, professional relationship. <laughs> I do have a lot of guy friends too, so... What? Sorry, Matt. Oh. I know, you're not the only one. What was that? I just whacked my desk pretending to be cranky and something fell off the desk. What was it? Hope it wasn't something that's connected to what we're filming. See, uh -oh. that's how manly I am. I break things as soon as I touch them. Huh. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, here's my wife's tail, which isn't weird at all. Up oh, there you go. Uh, on her onesie. <laughs> Get your onesie tail off my desk. Um, this is actually really warm. I don't wear this around the I house. Know. And I don't want to have, I am taking the head off. I don't want to 
have my buttons open because then you've got instant hairy chest and that's just too weird, but I'm quite warm. Okay, here we are. Another question um, from Robert Popper. Thank you, Robert. So this is for both of us, Steph. I actually sent you this one so you could think on it. Where would your dream shoot take place? No budget, question for both of you. Hey, sorry, do you have an answer on that one? Ah, oh, that's so hard. Japan that's just or Northern Lights. You just want to go to Japan. Well, it's also really pretty. I wonder if you can see... Like the see... colors and everything there yeah. too. I wonder if you can actually see the Northern Lights at the most northern tip of Hokkaido. I guess not. Maybe in a really rare time. I would assume that. You know, the, this is... I hope this isn't prejudice because I just heard it from one person who is kind of an expert. But apparently the Japanese... It's funny that those are your two things because apparently... Uh, traditionally, I don't know how far back, Japanese thought that a child conceived under the Northern Lights was kind of a demigod. So my agent in Iceland said he's had a bunch of Japanese couples from 20s through to late age who see the Northern Lights and just strip off and start making love in the field because <laughs> in the chance that they can conceive a child. <laughs> so there you go. Don't know. Wow, that's crazy. Well, you know, there's we you all sure? have our superstitions, oh, I guess. Parts of them. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've not had a Japanese guest on one of my Iceland tours yet. Um, <laughs> so for me, Rob, did you have any others other than Japan and Iceland or Japan and the Northern Lights, sorry? Nope. Well, you might be in luck because one, if I'm talking shoots with Steph, we had already talked about and kind of half specced before this nonsense kicked off, uh, doing a trip around Iceland for a series of shoots and a new course, Steph and I and a crew. So that could happen if we time it around winter, that we their winter, we could do a, you could possibly see the Northern Lights and Whenever maybe some pandemic is over. Japanese people as well. Um, <laughs> I actually have a whole list of kind of bucket list shoot opportunities that I want to pursue. Um, I don't want to share all of them because some I want to stay surprises, but one I actually did last year in Japan and the first little video on that is actually going to come out on Thursday. Now, of course, not all of my dream shoots are to have some kind of tie in to come back to YouTube, but I really want to go and shoot the great apes in the Congo. Uh, I want to go to Greenland and, ah, oh, mental blank, just off of Iceland, yeah, it'll come to me. Um, and I would love to do a portrait shoot on the salt flats of, just south of Peru. Um, there, I have so many places that are still on my list. I, you know, over time I check some off, but the list still keeps growing and growing. Um, Matt Sweetie is rightly saying that we're looking really cool. Thank you. Ah, wow, cool. I didn't think that word would have came up during this. <laughs> kawaii. I always get kawaii <laughs> and kawaii confused. Apparently one is scary and one is cute. And I can't really tell the difference. So if anyone speaks Japanese out there, kawaii and kawaii. Apparently one is one and one is scary. Oh, shoot. I did not know that. Well, when I say kawaii, they say, yes, that is scary. So it must be the other one. Oh, okay. So, oh, geez. <laughs> we don't need to talk about why I'm doing kawaii to people. Um, okay. There's one here from Photorescent, and I think you're in the room, so maybe you can clarify. You said, how did you oh. get known? Was there the video making you get known? So I'm not sure do you mean how Steph and I got to know each other or how we got discovered or what exactly, but uh, if you could clarify it, that'd be great. Um, tell us a bit about- Jeez, There's a lot of good questions in the chat. You guys are- Would you want really Faroe Islands? Thank you, Matthias. Uh, I think that's how you say it. So what questions have you seen there? Um, let's see, if you could change one thing about your lives except Corona in an instant, what would you change and why? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> um, one thing about yourself in an instance. Huh. I 
think. Wait, about your lives? So, like, anything that affects our lives? Let's go with the first thing that pops into your mind, because that's broad. There's one thing I always thought that I don't think super, super successful people, and of course there's outliers, there's people who inherit it, or there's just straight up geniuses or whatever, but I think generally really successful, productive people are able to completely focus in on what they're doing right now, and then get it done, finish the job, pull focus, and go on to the next thing, and do the next thing, and do the next thing, and then forget work and completely focus on family and friends, and be social 100%, and then disconnect and sleep, and then get up and do meetings for two hours, and then go to the gym, and then, and then, and then. So I think it, that's basically a superpower. If I had the ability to really focus and get rid of those voices and the distractions that stop me that I struggle with, that would be a realistic thing that I would love to have or be. Wait, so with that, you want to focus more on being able to like Squirrel. focus on work or socializing? No, everything. I think that everything. I think the balance. It's a. I think I don't think it's a mat thing. I think it's a general thing. But I think a lot mm -hmm. of people are trying to spend time with their partner or their parents or their whoever and they're still stressed about work. And then there's people who are at work thinking about family stuff and it doesn't necessarily help. If you just got that script written today, tomorrow you mm -hmm. can give all of your time to your partner. And I think that's more efficient than spending a week kind of half mm -hmm. doing both. For me anyway, that's something I know I struggle with and that I would like to have. What about you? No, I, I agree with that. Well, I'm a workaholic, so if I'm just sitting around doing nothing or watching TV, I feel like I have to be productive, so I have to work. Um, so if anything, I wish there were more hours in the day for me, but like lately because of the coronavirus, I guess since I'm sitting here or I'm doing other work, uh, I feel like I have to catch up on sleep or I will like freak out. So I wish ideally it could be awesome if I could only run on like two or four hours of sleep. Yeah, and that's that, those extra hours would help. That's another so thing that seems like a lot of highly productive people, not all, but a lot are early to bed, early to rise, which I don't actually get because if you go to bed at 3 a.m. and wake up at 9, that's the same as going to bed at 10 and waking up at 4. It's still six hours of sleep. I don't really get why it makes a difference, but I have friends who say they get up. Actually, I don't know if you met him, Jonathan in LA. He gets up at like three or four in the morning, but then there's no distractions. He works out and basically has his day's work done before his kids wake up and he's done. Like there's zero distractions. There's just birds waking up outside and that works for him. But then you hear of like, uh, well, I can only, I'm sure there's more, but I can only think of a, was it Churchill or some politician who slept, required so little sleep he had two staff that would do two eight hour shifts a day whilst he did like a, a 20 hour day and had three hours sleep a night. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really cool. I know I go through like um, for our film productions, I have what I call our like the hell weeks and I go four days of two hours of like sleep a night and then the fifth night I have six and I do that for like seems like a routine uh, like 15 days or something that's like a routine uh bodybuilders use to strip water out is that like to reduce your sanity <laughs> your, your um, main no i think that's just to for like efficiency because when typically a production team has 10 that's small considering but it's like more than 10 to 20 people on a team if there's only me and joey <laughs> the only way for us to kind of carry the team and take up those many hats is less sleep. So I don't yeah. see that's the difference. So I agree. And I have found actually with the more time on my hands now, I'm actually sleeping more, which makes me think maybe my body always required it and I just wasn't giving it to it. But I really yeah. think, and not a criticism of you of anyone, but if you can be so much more productive with the hours you have, you don't need more hours because Bill Gates has 24 hours a day, Branson has 24 hours a day, and that guy you know who achieves nothing has 24 hours a day. 
So if you can just get rid of all the clutter and all the shit that you're having to deal with and just get it done, I reckon, yeah, there, there's time to have a balanced life and still be super productive. I can't do it, but I reckon that's a, that's a worthy goal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have Margaret Thatcher has popped up. Christian is saying, hi, Matt. Hi, kangaroo. Hi, Christian. Hello. Um, William, do you ever take a trip and leave all cameras behind just because? Um, yeah, well, uh, no. <laughs> um, but but I, that's not to say that I never leave that i don't ever leave work behind so i if i like when my wife and i went for her birthday we went to barcelona so i wasn't making content i wasn't doing stuff for youtube but i still love photography and i still want to be creative so taking shots of us and what we were seeing and that kind of thing I still wanted to do that, but I wasn't doing it with the idea of how do I sequence this and how am I going to tell this story and what can I do with this for the audience? It was for us. So probably the answer is no, but I don't think that that's a workaholic thing. I mean, it's also a trick question because your phone has a camera. Oh, and burn. She got you. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Well, having said that, up until about six months ago, your phone was often dead battery, so... You were without cameras. Um, yeah, I guess. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, actually, Juan has been sending me, a, well, I have a, a dozen messages here that I haven't read that are people's questions. So thank you, Juan. Thank you to everyone for your questions. Um, just so you know, I've reorganized my little setup. I've got my streaming device here, my webcam that Steph and I can see each other on Skype, and I have the world's worst webcam at the moment. Um, because I gave away all the good <laughs> ones because who uses webcams anymore? Um, then I have all of the different windows to run this live thing on one screen tonight so I can keep a single eye line without doing this all night. But there's so many things going on, I just can't keep up with the stream of chat. So huge thanks to Juan for sending me over questions to answer. Um, David S. Well, this is... I think you're trying to be specific, but it's actually really broad. What camera would you trust to capture that one moment? It depends what that one moment is. If it's, uh, you know, the 100 meter finals at the 2021 uh, Summer Olympics, that's a different moment than if it were, I was just editing actually a shot I took of Steph last year with a phase one 100 megapixel medium format camera and that was a totally different job. So, you know, I would want the D6 for the 100 meter final, but the phase one is perfect for that kind of a portrait. So I guess it depends what that moment is. Do you guys have a go-to, this is an important shoot, we have to take the camera along? We only have like one. <laughs> take that one then, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sony a7 III. I mean, we do have like the older Canons, but I mean, they're really old, like T2Is. Well, the um, my offer for you to loan any equipment you need for bigger production <laughs> stands. So if you, if I have something that's on your list, then you can let me know. Now, okay. for people in the crowd, what should so thank you one the Hofbrau was nice it does it really does taste have you b been to the Hofbrau in Germany um tastes good <laughs> Munchen. uh so we have Steph's Harpoon Camp Wanna Mango which is a pale ale with mango we have my favorite which is Lef Blonde I always said Lefe but thanks to Philip Bloom for correcting me and then because everyone keeps banging on that you have to have pale ale I did an IPA. Um, this is Sierra Nevada handcrafted IPA. So let me know as a comment which one you guys would like. Um, Thomas Hain is saying, love the one you're with in terms of cameras. I do. Oh, yeah, I love my camera. <laughs> so it, I don't know if it's a glass half full, glass half empty type thing, but the saying um, the best camera is the one you have with you. The reverse of that is for someone with too many cameras is the ca the best camera is the one you left back at home. 
Uh, Spasms is saying, what is Steph drinking? I think she is drinking this guy. The camp on a mango. On a mango. Um, so we got a lot of votes for Lef, and because I yep. like it, I'll have it. Um, other questions? Uh, Chris is asking, why not do something about the best webcam to have? I have done that video, and that's why I have a box full of pieces of shit now. Um, I got in a bunch of great ones, and then at the end of it, because at that time I was using a laptop, not a desktop, and my laptop has a webcam in it, I, when we went to Bhutan, I gave most of them away and only kept the ones that were too shitty to even give as gifts. So now we have three of those left in the house, and because everyone's working from home, all the other webcams are pretty much sold out. So I am using the Yoluk. If you go search my webcam video, which has gotten a lot of hits in this last month, um, you'll see just how terrible the the resolution of it is. Um, questions, questions. Okay, okay. Steph. From Sean Vine, for both of you, if you could stop at B&H for 30 minutes, one of those dash things with an unlimited budget, what would you choose? Are you saying, Sean, you have 30 minutes and like everything you can carry, you can run out with, or you've got 30 minutes to browse the store and choose one thing? Because I think that would be an, oh, I've got to pitch that to the team. That would be an amazing game show that you give people like, one box or no boxes and they can take whatever they want, but they have to carry it. And if they drop anything, you get nothing. Ooh, that's a great show. Oh, oh my God, but the, <laughs> the insurance on that and like just the price of the possible damage you can get. They're the world's biggest say, camera shop. They can be empty boxes with bricks in them. It doesn't matter. It's TV, man. You know how we face Is it things. like everything you touch? Because I was just like, <laughs> just run through everything. Just touch everything. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty much what he meant. Everything you can touch. Um, David S. said, is it cold at least the left? Yes, I took them all out of the fridge just before I got here. I'm not a fan of room temperature beer. Um, Thomas, how many aperture lights can you carry? Oh, do you need some aperture lights? Um, I'm kind of set to be honest, so I wouldn't be picking them up. I, you got to go for uh, small, light, and expensive. So I mean, if you want to do it for resale, you got to just run to the Leica lens selection. Grab all the Nocta Luxes, Summer Luxes that you possibly can, and you know, you can leave a millionaire. Um, da -da 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 -da. Does the boy you support log in and watch? Ah. The boy. I think he's talking about um, the boy that you uh, uh, support in uh, Bhutan. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I was yeah. thinking he meant your boy, which is <laughs> <laughs> a man. But um, so, yeah, thank you for asking, William. That's really sweet. Uh, so... I don't think the bandwidth would be good enough for, and his English isn't good enough to keep up with what we were saying anyway, but his mom does have one of the webcams and I do still chat with her. Um, we're actually this week sending them some, another, uh, I don't know what the word is, some money to, to help with things. Tourism in Bhutan is down to the borders are closed. So um, yeah, we'll send some through to Sharab and his mum, but I don't think he joins in the, the live things. We do send pictures and whatnot, though. Um, oh, Dion. Next time, have an Australian beer. Australian $10. Ooh. But the only thing is they only have Fosters here. Do you really want that, Dion? They have Fosters and Fosters Premium. It's in this, like, almost liter cans. It's cheap but like it should be. They don't have any, you know, Coopers or anything decent here. So if that's what you really want, I'll do it, but I'm not gonna say thank you. <laughs> Is it not good? Do you not like it? No, it's like, it's the beer, the Australian beer that gets exported all around the world. And I think it's, I don't know, is it, I don't know if I've even had Budweiser, but it's got the same reputation as just being, it does oh, the job okay. type beer. 
But thank you very much for the polite thing. And if it makes you feel any better, I did have Vegemite today. So, and the cats ate kangaroo as well. So, and Steph's dressed as a kangaroo. So, you know, we, there's a lot of love for Australia in the room here. See, Dion said he wants beer, not piss. Yeah, we've, they, you can find um, <laughs> Fosters in small bars in the Himalayas in Nepal and in small bars in Bhutan that don't have the local alcohol. I don't know how they do it. It must just be super cheap. So if anyone knows where in uh, Brooklyn or where I can have a st good Australian beer delivered, next Monday I will have some. Let me know. Um, Let's, if you see a question there, Steph, go ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to check the ones Juan oh, is sending through. I've been randomly just like answering people, like typing in. Um, hold on, let me scroll up. Steph, what? Um, what you guys got? What you is guys this Pokemon? Got? It says, Steph, what po PKMN game gen is your fave? Oh, I'm assuming it's Pokemon. Uh, okay, so I was kind of deprived as a child for playing video games or having game consoles. So the only one that I had, like Pokemon, was red and gold. My brother got all of the games. He has Ruby and Sapphire and whatever else is after that. Yeah. So I'm really bad at video games. <laughs> I still only own a Nintendo 64, so quit your engine. <laughs> it's it's funny because like I can't even play like Mario, like because I it's hard for me to jump from one obstacle to the next, and I always just end up dying. So I have to use like whatever cheat code that gives me like infinite lives. Says the black belt. Perfect. Yes, I know. It's a video game. I just I can't. I. Can't do it. I just can't. <laughs> Rusty, I'm sorry. I saw I, I saw your message half an hour ago, and I forgot to answer it. Uh, he's asking uh, my R5 first thoughts. I did do a video on it. Actually, I did two videos on it. Um, I want to wait and see the full spec sheet. It, yeah, uh, without rehashing it all and misspeaking now, I did two videos on it. Um, it may be the most hyped camera to date, and I really hope it lives up to it. Uh, God Where's mode. Seth? Oh. <laughs> uh, my YouTube channel, we have done like different uh, web series for Nerf Assassin. Um, we have three series out now? Two series? Oh, no, we're working on a third one. I think uh, two series out. It's called Nerf Assassin, just because it's hard to have guns out in public. So the easiest thing is having Nerf guns, because nobody's going to arrest you for waving around an orange and yellow gun. So this is America. Yeah, check out my YouTube channel, guys. This <laughs> is America. You could still get shot from a distance. I know it's scary. Okay, back to happy, happy <laughs> internet land. Um, yeah. <laughs> Photo Mix Media, any way to collaborate with you guys? Uh, you know, for the amount of flyby uh, kind of copy and paste, hey, we'd love to do something together. What do you think type of emails we get? I'm not overwhelmed with proper proposals from, you know, people who are interested to do something together. So if you actually took the time to come up with an idea and suggest that there's a good chance we could collaborate. Um, but when someone just sends a, hey, I'd love to do something, any ideas, well, you know, not to be a dick, but you contacted us, why, why do I have to research who you are and what we could potentially do to help you? Come with an idea and, you know, we, we're just normal folks, that could be fun. Yeah, that's, that's like one of my pet peeves, because we get that a lot, and then it's like, oh, what do you want us to do? It's like, well... Um, if you could come up with the fight choreography and we could act, um, we don't have camera equipment and we don't have locations. Outfits or makeup. And we don't have a script either. <laughs> and I'm like, you basically want a cameo <laughs> and coaching. I was like, wait, so you just, what? <laughs> what is happening right now? I always have like those stupid like conversations and it's like, it takes, I used to literally like, listen to people talk about possible collaborations on the phone and it was the longest conversation i've ever had was stupid three hours and after that i was like never again 
if they don't have a budget and if they don't have an idea i'm cutting it and it's like it, i can't i can't waste three hours listening to an idea that isn't really fully thought out but don't preach to me like it's the best thing ever yeah but don't, i agree <sighs> but don't let that put you off guys i would just say if you're going to someone who uh, you want to work with whether they're bigger more popular busier than you or not go with an actual proposal you know if you meet someone in a bar or you know on the street then it's fine to say you know i would love to do something with you you guys are doing great stuff this is what i do i would love to talk to you later about doing something together then come with a pitch but if you're actually going to contact someone go with an actual pitch there's no point just making it a hey how about maybe something one day maybe you don't know what what, what do you expect to get back from that a, yeah i would love to I'll, I'll see you on tuesday i mean be realistic about it. Mm -hmm. um, Spazay, you got to tell me how to say your name because I feel like I'm saying it rudely. Spazames, uh, what's your absolute favorite camera and why? Um, well, that's that's still hard. So if it was, if I'm just going out for a walk around the city, no real gig to do, just for my own enjoyment, then. It'll be one of the two Leicas that I own, the M10P or the monochrome CCD. Um, for Of what I actually own for a portrait shoot, then it would, in studio, it would be the D850 still. And for travel, I'm still working on that, but the D850 or the R4. Um, ah, Steph, as a model, uh -huh. what's the phone call you are waiting for? dot 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 slash question mark oh man that's a good question uh okay so when i started out modeling i i didn't really have much of a goal uh because i started back in college and it was more of a a side thing like it was just something that i really enjoyed and i just wanted to kind of master it i'm kind of stubborn in that way if i'm going to do something i would like to do it like a hundred percent um but then after a while, like sometimes like when you do shoots, it kind of gets boring. That's why I really enjoy editorial work. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't think I'm going to be modeling for that much longer. I mean, I'm just not, I'm getting old, <laughs> I'll be honest. Like I think technically my career should have ended like a few years ago, but I'm surprised I'm still modeling. Um, I guess. I don't know. I kind of want to do like make that full transition from modeling to full time acting and producing. That's kind of the dream at this point. Modeling is fun, um, but it's I, I don't th I don't want to say it's like my true passion, okay. you know, so Just, I guess the phone call would be like, hey, you're too old. You need to quit. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Just for anyone other than Steph out there struggling with that age thing, just let you know, Naomi Campbell's 49 and Brad Pitt is 50-something, so. That is true. <laughs> that is true. It's just like, um, I guess the stigma that it comes with modeling is it's, it's something that has progressed over the years, but there's still that stigma that's around like whenever you meet people and they're like oh I, I model and then there's also like now because of Instagram it's like what kind of model are you like before it was commercial <laughs> editorial runway I'm a wrinkle now model. it's like yeah, I mean it could be anything like that but it's like there's foot models but there's Instagram models and I'm like ah uh, and it's it's kind of a weird but so I do it, but, yeah. so what's the issue is it because you is it to do with doing honor to the word model or getting paid so be a um, be a foot model be an instagram model do gigs oh, that yeah. get paid and do what works for you there's this is not for yeah, you I, this I is kind of the reason i moved here <laughs> in new york there's the ugly agency that represents weird looking people because weird looking people get cast too you're not going to ever get cast but yeah, I might get the gig over you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know. Modeling is fun and everything, but I would rather do acting. And it's just being a pretty face. A lot of times people just assume, okay, you're only pretty and it's very one-sided. And unfortunately, that's like a lot of 
what people would assume from a quote unquote model. I think, it's really sad. Yeah, but I reckon a, a quote unquote face pretty only not smart model is the one who has to stop when she turns 25. Someone who has business sense knows how to pivot it. And, you know, if your strongest opportunity lies in being a producer, then that's the way to go. If until you're 35 mm -hmm. being a part-time model, a part-time whatever, and a part-time producer is, you know, gives you the balance you want, then if you're getting paid, you're doing what you enjoy, then who gives a fuck about what people think of your age or what you're doing? That is, that is true. We'll see, like, Sorry, oh, I do don't normally for. say They're the F-word on live. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, we can't curse? No, we can, but I just don't normally drop the F-bomb live. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, I drop the F-bomb all the time. See, <laughs> now that's very unmodel-like, just say. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, um, there, okay, back when I was in college, there were moments where I was like, okay, I think I'm going to quit modeling. But then all of a sudden, somebody's like, oh my God, I've always wanted to work with you. And I'm like, ah, okay, fine, I'll work with them. And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> and actually, the last time that um, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to check Model Mayhem, see if there's any opportunities. If not, like, I, I guess I'm just going to call it as is. Like, that last time was actually when I found your casting mat. So that was like years ago. That's so funny. You know, I have this reputation online that I only work with Asian women f for some reason. Uh, and then I get these angry messages saying, you really should work with a uh, white or a black woman or a this or a that. I'm like, I have. But then it's like by chance that in Australia, I was working with Tina a great friend mm -hmm. who's also got a man who also was not a romantic interest, but who was also by chance Vietnamese Australian. And then coming here, I end up working with Steph, who is Vietnamese American, who is also dot, dot, dot. But funny that that was the last time you were checking in. When I started working with Tina, that was the first day she put her casting up, her profile up on Model Mayhem. And she took it down two days later. She had one photo shoot and was planning to take it down. We worked together <laughs> and then she took it down and just worked as a collaborator and a makeup artist. So look at that. Keeping people in the game, pushing people out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow fever yeah, for the crazy, win. Because I was like, man, like I haven't done a shoot in a while and like I'm going to try to do something different. I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just see what's available. And then I came across your casting and was like, Oh, that sounds fun. I'm a YouTuber too. Yeah, sure. Let me check it out. That was fun. I was like, whoa. See, so, why do people always have to put out. a weird romantic spin on things as soon as it's a man as a woman? Why can't it be that we're both entrepreneurs and small business people and we had this weird encounter that was fun at the YouTube space and two or three years later, we're just great friends? Why is that hard for people to get? Is it just that they see you and your beautiful and they wish that they were dating you, so they, you know, put a dear penthouse letter spin on it or something. I really don't get it because everyone has yeah, friends of the opposite sex. Why do they assume, like, we don't flirt. We're not huggy, kissy, touchy. Why do people assume that? I really, I don't get it. I, I honestly don't know. They're just like, ooh, male, female. That, they've got to be going, I guess. But it's like, I have seen no. those documentaries. <laughs> now, but it's, it's, I don't know. It's just people's assumptions, and it's like as much as we tell people, like, nope. But people will believe what they want to believe. So I want to. Yes, I agree. But I just want to acknowledge something in the chat, uh, Greg H. I saw your message a little while ago saying, "Do they answer super chat questions only?" And I was planning to reply saying, well, come on, buddy, we've been talking for however long, 40 minutes, and there's been one super chat. That's not it. I didn't see your question. Um, and now I see you've just made th three super chats. So I'm sorry you felt the need to do that. If there's a way for me to refund you that money, I can tell you YouTube takes half of it, so I'm happy to do that anyway. I'm not waiting for super chats to answer your question, but it does, however, make it this big and green on the screen. Um, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> so 
for you and everyone else in the room, no, you don't need to make a donation. It's fine. I'm doing fine. I'm not here to make $6 off a two hour live stream. That's not what this is about. Um, and here we go. David Fowler, Matt's seen the money. So I will give you your $15 worth right now. Greg H, I just put a GH5 for underwater photo. Oh, this is gonna be a question I can't answer. Um, <laughs> I would love discussion on <laughs> ideal. I don't get this. I bought a GH5 for underwater photo and videography. I would love to do a discussion of ideal lens for home video streaming. Do you live in a fish tank? <laughs> I don't really get it. Um, uh, general work setups for home streaming podcasts. Okay, so I got you, I got you, I got you. Um, you own the 50 Apo Summicron? Boy, that's the lens I'd be stealing from B&H if I had a shopping spree. Not stealing, collecting, collecting. <laughs> um, so I actually have been thinking on that. We get, every time we do a live stream, we get questions about what is the setup here. And I have to give all of the credit to Tom, who's one of the moderators in the room. He guided me on everything and John as well. But Tom put in hours and hours and hours to give me different advice on things. And what we have works, but the main piece we're using, I need to return because it's on loan. And I'm tossing up on some extra options, which would potentially give me second and third angles over the shoulder that I could do close ups on that I'm waiting to be in stock basically. So I, I am thinking to uh, do a video on that, but let me just give you your money's worth here. And I'm sorry to turn it into that situation, but I don't want you to, to now ignore you having done that. Um, I'm using a Blackmagic Capture, which has <gasps> HDMI. What are you laughing at, Steph? Ah, oh, Greg, stop it. <laughs> I know, Greg, stop it. Can we, can we stop him from doing that somehow? That would kind of be rude to block someone when they're being generous. No, I'm not saying to block, but to just like, hey, stop giving money. <laughs> Buy a tutorial series with the money. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> if you want to really grab my attention, give a cent. And I guess that will make it big as well and it won't hurt your wallet. But giving $2 and then YouTube takes half or whatever they take, I don't need a dollar and I'm not looking to get a dollar to answer your question. Um, oh fuck, I don't even, oh, I did it again. I don't even remember what um, where I was about to get to with all of that. Um, Oh God, what, so what was the last thing that was meant to answer for you? So I'm using the, the <laughs> black magic thing. I'm not gonna read the comments, so stop it, Greg. Um, the black magic running HDMI into an A9. I have that on my tripod. I'm using the Rode uh, mic system here. So then my audio goes into the Sony and then straight into the black magic into my camera. The trickiest part of the whole setup for streaming on Skype was what Tom walked me through. On Mac, you have to set something up so that Steph's audio is split and goes to both my headphones and into the black magic so you guys can hear it because I can't have it playing through a speaker and go in. So you have to duplicate it somehow. So there's a little software for that. Um, so yes, we, um, oh, and now he's given 50 Canadian dollars. What the hell, man? I mean, that basically. <laughs> so this is now a yellow fever. Oh, oh, uh, like really, maybe I do need to block you at this point. Uh, <laughs> so is this oh like, is this the negging technique people talk about? If I keep saying, no, no, don't give us money. They're just gonna keep giving us money. Please, I'm drowning in cash. I don't know where to hide it. And my mattress is full. Then we flip it and then we're like, hey, give us money. Then we say, don't give us money. Oh, but maybe the shock will like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Can I just say I made my month's quota now, 60 bucks for this live stream. I can pretty much end this and just buy cigars and caviar and stay offline for the next two weeks. Is, is Lucky okay? Yeah, he's coughing. My, my doggy's got a collapsed trachea. Oh my God, Greg, please do not. Like seriously, don't. If you're going to donate anything, just go buy oh. something or donate to the CDC or yeah, do something. That. If anyone wants to make a live chat, instead just send us a message saying that you've made a donation to 
some worthy charity. Yeah. That's, that's better. There you go. Um, no, well, I, we're not freaking out, Greg, but I don't want to create an atmosphere of people needing to pay money. We're here for two hours. I don't know how you value your time, but we've done 10 of these and had three donations. It's not for the money. It's to engage with you guys. And I don't want to, even though you're joking, I don't want to make a big thing of it. Yeah, does CDC. Oh, so he, if you um, want to just send me the ARPO, I will answer all the questions you want, my friend. Forget about the cash, ARPOs. I take ARPOs. That's fine. Um, okay. Whew. Lucky. I need to take a break. And hello, Lucky. How you doing, buddy? Last time I smashed oh the lens, I was talking about you, and you were just here in my apartment. That was weird. Okay. Whilst I... Okay, Sean Vine, Steph, and Art School Dropouts, what would a fantasy location be for you guys to shoot in? Uh... Hmm. The Shaolin Temple. One of you guys is Kung Fu, right? That's so hard. Um, like full access to like all the locations and stuff. It's a hypothetical, bro. Take it whichever way you want. I, I know, I know, I know. But this is like, because that has come up a, like a couple of times. All right, either Vietnam or Italy. Just because we did write a script that had an Italy location. Oh, you can come to Little ah. Italy here. That's true, but still. Say hi, Lucky. Okay. He, he's an old man, guys. He has a collapsed trachea, so he coughs. And he has no teeth, so his, his tongue is out. But he's still adorable. And he clip-clops oh. around the house like he's wearing high heels, just like my Loki. And just lovely. Everyone with pets no, gets it. So what? Uh, which onesie okay, costume is he wearing? <laughs> he does have a Batman cape, but he like always takes it off. Uh, we're such bad parents. I do the same. Put stuff on Loki, and she just <laughs> freaks out. Oh, and Cliff, yes, we are planning on doing a Lady 3. Um, is this because of this whole quarantine stuff? Lady 3 is on a, a slightly bigger scale. Um, so, yeah, I'll be stabbing people and shooting people, and that will be fun. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, Glacier Activity, you are right. He's saying, come on, you want to come shoot in Norway? and make Game of Thrones look silly. I agree with that. Now, uh, I've always wanted to go to Norway. I have a great friend in Norway. My wife's best friend was living in Norway, not now, uh, but she loved it when she went there. So I would love to go to Norway and let's see if we can um, tie in some kind of a collab so we can make it work for both of us. And then you can, oh, and I have a potential, oh, should I mention that now? I better not. It's not finalized. So nothing, nothing anyway. Um, William Inbody, <laughs> what trip is the Leica S3 review going on? I don't know. I was hoping I would have had a unit now to test, and that would have been the Brooklyn waterfront trip. <laughs> so Ooh. in a way, I hope um, that, well, I don't, because I'm actually really, really keen to test out the S3. I know it's such a niche product, but I'm personally really interested in it. Um, I, that said, I would like this situation to end and be totally safe to go somewhere as soon as possible for us all. And after that, be able to take that camera on a real trip. It's not worth taking a class leading medium format, $25,000 system, well, as great as Philly is to Philly. I would love to be able to take it to Lofoten, for example. So let's see how we go. Um, let's see. Someone's saying Pokemon Master. Andre yeah, is scaring me order. saying <laughs> yay for stabbing. Sure. Yay. <laughs> um, 
So Trevor, I'm sorry, I'm gonna skip your question just because we've answered that one a couple of times already in this chat. Um, Jim Ward, this is an interesting one. You did work with a lot of photographers, Steph, you probably work with more photographers face-to-face -face than I do, so let's make this for both of us. Do you think that photography snobbery is as prevalent as in art or painting, i.e. a great, great photograph is considered great or classic merely because of the photographer? Okay, so that's not where I thought the question was going, but that's an interesting one. Um, I guess, so my two cents first, I guess that it depends what you mean by what's considered great. If you just look at like on a society level, when you hear that daffodils are sold for $200 million or whatever, some people will think, wow, it must be great. A lot of people, <sighs> ah. <laughs> I, God damn it, Greg. I said a thousand, Greg. Come on now, buddy. <laughs> um, um, but there's a difference between what is being paid for and what necessarily people in the industry respect and think is great or what the average person on the street thinks is amazing. Um, so yes, there, you know, Peter Lick sold a million dollar photo of a potato. Does anyone think that was a particularly amazing photo? Other than the collector, I doubt it. And I'm sure the collector bought it because it's a one of one Peter Lick. Um, so in art, like in any collectible, it's worth what the market will pay, how limited edition it is, that kind of thing. That doesn't mean it's necessarily great. Like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jackson Pollock. Those paintings, you could say, yeah, I could do that. But anyone who knows painting will definitely know the difference between mine and his. And it does make a difference that it was made by him. There is a legacy and a history and a terroir of the, the artist. Um, I don't think there's that many things that are completely unique to photography. I think as photographers, we see it as being a personal thing, but I think the same challenges we face, the same bullshit and snobbery and elitism and the rejection of that, which is often just as annoying. I think it's everywhere, personally. What do you think, Steph? I agree. <laughs> okay, excellent. I mean, you pretty much said everything. <laughs> Greg, give your money to a charity. That's not me. Yes, to a charity. All right, from now, any, any donations from this chat, I'm just gonna send to Steph. So you do what you want, so then I have a clear conscience. You can um, Ooh, sweet. <laughs> give it straight to Lucky in the form of food and new beds. So after uh, YouTube's chat, it says, uh, YouTube's cut, it says we've made $140 Canadian, I guess, in <laughs> revenue. So that'll be yours on top, Steph. Um, but okay, so his cool. question was, can you imagine being banned for being for donating too much? <laughs> That was your question. You will only find out once you pass a thousand. <laughs> I want to oh know are both of your favorite hobbies outside the realm of media. What are your hobbies outside of media, Steph, other than uh, puppy tummy rubs? Uh, it would just be martial arts. I, I miss going to taekwondo. I miss training. Like, I want to go back to train. So not being... Hey, Lucky. Not to be Captain Hardass, but is there a reason why you can't or won't? Is it just, is it something you're planning to do? Oh, or? time. It, it's, it's time and like commitment. Um, Cause I used to train like, oh my God, like five hours a day, every day. And I don't think I have that time to give. And that was before when I wanted to be world champion and I still want to be world champion. <laughs> But I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I would like to just go back to training. Just to go back to training. It's just always scary because every time I go back, um, all the guys, because it's Taekwondo, so it's mostly guys. So when I had trained before, they were all younger and shorter and they weren't as aggressive and strong. And now that they're older, they're like, ooh, Steph's back. And then they take it all out on me. And I was like, hey, I was really nice when you guys were smaller and not good. So, <laughs> just 
So, so every time I go, I get beat up. <laughs> you have that competitive spirit. Can I suggest there's a, you know, people who I think often end up being working for themselves, for want of a better word, entrepreneurs, I think often have a generally a competitive spirit and sounds like that's going wanting for you. Have you ever looked at the Guinness World Records book? Yes. There's so much horse shit in there. You could be the world's yeah. best uh, toothless dog onesie wearing runner balancing a teaspoon on a spoon, uh, an egg on a spoon. And like that, you could be a world champion, you know? Yeah. Why do, how do you think I became the world's biggest seafood buffet eating onesie wearer? Just from them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, we had one there. So someone said, my hobby is eating. Well, this was meant to be a loose fit onesie. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's not outside of media, but my biggest hobby and interest from 18 to 35 was film. That's what I studied my second degree in and what I'm most passionate about, like uh, cinema film. Um, yeah, now definitely seafood is a big passion. Travel is a huge passion, but that is for everyone. So that's nothing terribly interesting, right? Um, and in the last year or 18 months, I don't know if this is a passion, but um, it's an interest. I'm really interested in wristwatches. Uh, mm. Mm, that's more expensive than trying to be world champion. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so okay. Thomas saying, if you want to get into streaming, you need to think about how you're going to ca uh, power the camera. So right now I have a HDMI cable stretched over the monitor because it's just long enough to get to the camera without hitting my screen, which is just there. Um, and then I have a USB-C cable running into my A9 to keep it powered. I feel like I need a Oh, cat. Andrew, this is Lucky. Hi, Lucky. I feel like I should have Lucky and Loki on screen at the same time. You could try. <laughs> I'll get cut. No, I haven't missed any Ooh, other... So any other... They're so cute. Aww. <laughs> Wait, I can put you on a single shot so you can just have all of that. <laughs> Look at his paws. <laughs> Jump back and take a look at the questions I have here. Um, do you have a favorite picture that you've ever taken or that a uh, photographer has taken of you? Um, actually, it's funny that you mentioned it because I started selling prints of some of the images that I've done with like, um, with two photographers that uh, I have worked with for years and years and years. The Roberts. So, um, yeah, the Roberts. <laughs> They're both Roberts. Um, <gasps> yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Cool. Loki's coming. Thanks to my oh. wife. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, there's... There's shoots that, there's images that I really like because of the memories behind it, but then there's also some that is just, because it just looks really cool how it was done with like the whole team, with like makeup, wardrobe and everything. Yeah. So. Hi, Lucky. <laughs> um, and you were worried that the cats would beat up your puppy when you brought him over, but they were just freaked I out. I know. I was surprised because... Lucky is lucky. You know, it's a little pushover and spoiled and just adorable. Well, I don't know that they've ever been in a room with a dog before. Hmm. Um, so put your link to your portfolio and the prints in the thing, guys, uh, oh, because yeah. there's some beautiful shots there. <laughs> and I've been pressuring Steph all day that she needs to put the prices up because I think they're too low. So if you get in before she puts the prices up, you can get yourself a ridiculous bargain. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys can do that. <laughs> uh, what is the website again? Your Lucky dog sounds you like you have a hundred-year-old grandpa in the room. He is old, though. 
That's the site, guys. Boom. Yeah, get them while they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Before Greg gets in there and buys them all with these big Canadian dollars. Oh, my gosh. Well, maybe I should bump them now. <laughs> You're going to uh, run? You okay. You want to just... What are Steph's two best qualities and what are Matt's two best... We've answered that before in the last one, didn't we? I don't know. Do we... Well, maybe do we... I guess that's one. Can I answer my two best qualities? Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Levitation and handsomeness. You? That is so spot on. Right. I actually... This is... This chair has no wheels. Uh, uh, it's powered huh. by a sense of self-satisfaction. I can work sweatpants real well, and I burp, like, real loud. Oh, do you want to do a burp off? Wait, hold on. I need to, like, drink a lot of beer. Hold on. <laughs> People are going to totally unsubscribe from this and be like, excuse me, what the fuck did we sign up for? Oh, see, I dropped the F-bomb. Is that another third quality? I guess so. Well, if anything, that'll just get Greg to donate again. Oh, jeez. Um... Steph, how come you've decided on such a rebellious name for your channel? Your appearance doesn't suit the name. Of the um, what a rebel. I mean, <laughs> I guess. I mean, uh, it has gone through a lot of different, I guess, mission statements in the past. But I think it just comes down to none of us even went to art school. Uh, oh. Joey actually went to MIT. I, I didn't know that. I have a degree in pharmaceutical. Yeah, he went to MIT. To study what? Uh, he was a physicist. Oh. How many f fucking lives has this man lived? Every time I meet yeah, him, I, I, I hear another know, parallel story of <laughs> something that, honestly, every time I doubt someone that I've met could have achieved. And then you write, wait, those seven stories I heard all about Joey. And now he's a physicist with yeah. MIT. I don't believe it. I think he's a Russian yeah. spy. And he actually wanted to work for NASA. Well, I, so did I. Wanting and to do something doesn't films. mean anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's that. But, yeah, none of us went to art school. And it was just a bunch of friends making films and everything. And now it's like we don't go by typical film standards or film strategies, I guess. And we just want to make whatever we want to make and we don't do a lot of trending content that's kind of our thing it's a lot of feel good martial arts action comedy content nothing really pandering just because we want it to make people's day and that's just mm. yeah and our school dropouts is just memorable it's a memorable name yeah makes sense it's a it's a funny one. You want to not be clickbaity, but then it's also I actually find it quite annoying. And this is not the people who are in the audience are gonna guess who I'm talking about. That's not aimed at anyone in particular. Think of your people who are doing your genre, Steph. When you well, it's probably mm -hmm. different for you because you're not really doing reviews and technique type stuff so much as a lot of it is narrative driven. So it doesn't a clickbaity title yeah but there is still a factor because i am a woman too uh, so like so, for example well, then you just put uh, that in the female um, martial artist you put that in the metadata right <laughs> like sexy asian fantasy girl right <laughs> oh my god i get i get a lot of casting requests to be in people's films and it's always ninja asian assassin or it's like i would um, watch that I'm that sounds the... amazing ninja asian assassin Jeez. yeah <laughs> and then the secondary character to help the Caucasian lead character who happens to have like a magical power. And it's like, <laughs> the oh, magical I'm just there power to help of being white. <laughs> yeah, basically. And it's just, yeah. I mean, and as a female martial artist, I see other female martial artists on like Instagram and stuff. And it's, I mean, it's hard because like I get what content will blow up and a lot of times i i get it a sexy female asian martial artist will trump a female asian martial artist well that's like sexy the sexy factor will really sell it and that's just how it is and i get that but now it's like 
in our films, I usually wear more clothes than Joey does. And like an Asian auntie, Joey had, he showed his legs and I didn't, I just wore leggings or pants the whole time. But he also gets um, sent more dick pics than you, right? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> he got checked out for his calves the one time, which was pretty impressive. He, I've never had very, a compliment on about my calves. He can smash baseball bats with his kicks, right? So no surprise he has strong calves. Yeah, he never realized it himself, though. I was like, what? <laughs> um, I have to circle back. Yeah. I just saw a message here. Hi from Lisa Oster. Wow, what a blast from the past. Hi, Lisa. Lisa is a photographer. I don't know if you're still based Hello. in New York, but I haven't seen you for so long. But she was a key partner in getting my first book published. Um, and she oh. came to my workshop and we hung out a bunch, but I haven't seen you in years. I don't know what it is. When I was visiting New York before I lived here, there were several people who were so lovely and I would always catch up with them. Since I moved here, I never saw them. So I don't know what that is, but I really hope you're well, Lisa. I'm glad to You know what you should you. do? You should just be like, hey guys, I'm moving in a month. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, oh my gosh, you can't move. We haven't hung out yet. And then they'll hit you up. Then afterwards, you're like, psych. I see how it is. I'm only important when I'm not going to be here. <laughs> Who wins from that, though? Yeah. Well, I guess I get to see them. Yeah. Okay. But, Gla yeah. Glacier activity, surprisingly, is an earth scientist. Actually, not surprisingly at all. Oh. That's cool. Um. Sean, Stephanie Pham, Stephanie Dam Pham, is there any meal you've never had but you would love to try? I don't know, but I am craving like crabs right now. You're craving what? <laughs> crabs like seafood or sushi. Uh, There's not a sushi place by me, man. That's rough. They're all closed. That's rough. Ooh, ramen too. Uh, it pays me when I see your like Instagram stories and I'm like, damn, I want ramen. So crabs and ramen, I think I can help you out. You must be in an area that gets delivery. So two things we've been cooking lately. One is the ramen and I think I'm getting pretty good at it. It's a bit indulgent, but it's Ooh. so delicious. Next time you come, I'll make it for you. But another one, we started, well, we started, I made it once and it was so good, lobster rolls. But we, on the side of lobster rolls, we also made a crab and scallop roll and it was a bit special. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we're, we're, so we're struggling here. Little did he know, but Greg is paying for all of this. Mwahahaha. <laughs> <laughs> 101 blog saying seafood eat off, mate. You may be the only guy in the chat who's got a similar appetite to me, but you've been at a seafood table with me. You don't stand a chance. So how can you expect kangaroo Steph to stand a chance? Come on. That's just silly talk. Yeah, Matt actually came down one time to have a sushi eat off with all of the people in art school dropouts. We like he swept us easily. And they work out. And yeah, and we would, I guess it's like almost training. We used to go every like other week just so that we could just like go and just eat a lot and get our money's worth. And now, now it's like, wow, we don't know how to eat, but Korean barbecue, we know how to eat that. That's, that's a different story. Oh, Korean barbecue. Well, until the soju comes out and then you have a cup and then you fall asleep and then I eat your beef. So... Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Oh, Photoresin is pointing out that what kind of a fancy lady are you? You didn't even burp. I'm trying not to burp on here. Okay, that's one for Steph. Yeah. Um, <laughs> questions, questions. Seriously, though, I can send you the ramen thing we're doing. It's so easy. It takes a little bit of time, like just sitting there doing its own thing, but... It's so yummy, and then you end up with like a lunch for two for four or five bucks, and it's so fantastic. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> okay, uh, so I saw a couple here that I think I had missed in the past, so let me scroll up before Moneybags Greg gets in. 
Um, My God, Greg. <laughs> I thought you were an atheist. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a, there was a bunch here. Where is it? I'm sorry. I know I missed a couple of questions back here. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> one encouraging people. Oh, Matt, do you think the Fuji Film XH1 is still a good buy in 2020 for bird photography and portraits? Okay, nice one. What, what was the name, sorry? Uh, for Jay Perry? Oh, I thought you said... Or oh, for the camera. Oh, but it's for bird photography and portraits. I thought that was yeah. the name you are saying. Okay. Um, so, from memory, it is their top sporty model. So, if you want to stay in the Fuji range, then yes, that's probably the one to go for. For portraits. So, I tested it, I think, in Laos. And it was, I, I found it the most ergonomic of the cameras. So when people ask, do you think it's still a good buy now? It's hard for me to say because I don't have this encyclopedic knowledge of what everything is selling for new and used of every different model in America, let alone around the world. I would say when I tested it, it was a fantastic camera and the camera hasn't changed. The market has moved, but I guess before too long the X-H2 is going to be coming and it'll drop in price and then you have a trade-off in a newer sensor and maybe higher frames per second. But uh, I thought it was a great camera. Uh, I don't even understand the last question from Greg. Uh. Something about South Korea? I don't know. <laughs> Annyeonghaseyo. Um. <laughs> and Greg again. <laughs> Greg, you don't have Greg, to do the super chat. You're, you can you're just... drunk, buddy. Just, drunk. just bring it down a notch. Bring We're all down. friends here. <sighs> um, Dale Berry, wow, is this your live cam? Gorgeous quality. It's actually just a really cheap Logitech webcam. It's just this. It has all of this to work with, so it looks pretty fantastic. Oh, El Chupacabre. Yeah, I'll, I'll check that. I, I thought I disabled the ability to buy, buy phone cases with my face. I don't know. Would people buy that? That's weird. <laughs> Especially if you can stretch it out. I drop my phone a lot, so it's like, pock, your face hitting the ground. <laughs> uh, Yobo is, says she misses Yamcha. So do I. Lisa, like your warm background, that's a gravity background hand-painted background with a little light lighting it Man, up. I want dim sum now. Uh, oh, by the way, I ordered a dim sum for dinner. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Just hargao and Shanghai silmai and pork ribs and kung pao chicken. Oh, <sighs> <sighs> uh, crap. Uh, oh, a ton of people playing video games half drunk with their boss after Korean barbecue. Okay, thanks for clarifying, Greg. See, I could see, like, your comment. You don't have to do the super chat. Boom. There you go. But, Steph, all the money's mm -hmm. going to you, so you, um, you know, show a little bit of foot. Do what you got to do here. Oh, God. <laughs> Jim Ward <laughs> asks, uh, are you a cricket fan? I'll just stop you there. No, I'm not. Uh, not at all can't hold a conversation on it. Uh, do you have a favorite YouTube channel, Stefan Lee? Something to do with puppies, uh, I guess. Oh. Shoot, do I have a favorite? Oh, um, I like watching BuzzFeed's uh, the, um, Unsolved, Mysteries Unsolved. So good. Like, it's funny. I am scared of ghost stories and everything, but those are so entertaining. So, yeah. Well, I like art school dropouts, so this is awkward, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Greg. <laughs> this is going to you, though, Steph, so settle down. This is going to you, is, little happy ha lucky. It's also oh. going to YouTube. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have my Naz on under my desk, and it gets really warm, and I just realized Loki's sitting on it, and I just kicked her. Sorry. 
Oh, yeah. Maybe instead of making uh, donations, Greg, you should go buy one of Steph's prints. She probably gets a better cut of that. And otherwise, we're not going to pay attention. I mean, you can become and a patron on my Patreon page. I have Fractured Atlas. Like, there's so many. Unless it's a thousand dollars, we're not even paying attention anymore. This nickel and diming stuff above it. <laughs> um, I mean, literally, with twenty thousand dollars, I can make a feature film. Yeah. But don't send it here because YouTube takes it. <laughs> Yeah, they did. Andrew has a really important question here. Are you both able to still get haircuts? Why do you think she we she's wearing a onesie? I actually only get my hair cut like once a year, so I'm good. Huh. What about the enzy bits? No, I actually don't have a lot of split ends because like I don't blow dry my hair and I don't really do anything with my hair like so washing it's pretty it healthy. or conditioning it oh yeah what is that gross <laughs> so gross i know <laughs> um do we have any other good ones here to jump into uh Mr. Lime asked, and I answered in chat, how was the beer? Steph suggested it was a bit sweet for me, but it was not bad. I do like mango and I do like pale. Um, I like sweet, so it makes sense. Oh, it makes sense that we work together. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any others here? 720 and <laughs> looks like Lucky's got the crazy legs going on. I know. It's, just, it's so cute. His toe beans are adorable. It's a struggle. Like at home, Tim and I were just like, oh, he's so cute. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what um, What are you going to have for dinner, Steph? Uh, Vietnamese summer rolls. Homemade? We've been talking about that. We have the rice paper rolls, but we haven't made them yet. But I got a whole bunch. I know it's a hybrid abomination, but I have a whole bunch of um, like coleslaw mix and vermicelli. We might be able to put something together to have this week. What, what, you can literally put anything in a rice like paper roll. It doesn't matter. As long as you can <laughs> close it. I'm always like making ones this yeah. big that are ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lisa's asking, does Lucky have her his own Instagram? No, he doesn't because he's like, well, he's also super old. And he doesn't understand Instagram just, anymore. <laughs> yeah. And like, it's, it, he's really boring, honestly, because all he does is eat sleeves and shits. And the Kardashians are yeah, doing Yeah, he doesn't well. really play. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, he doesn't really play much, um, but he has been getting an attitude lately since we've been home a lot because he's like, oh, they're home all the time now. I can actually yell at them for my attention. Hey, take me outside. <gasps> I need to pee. So this won't... I'm like, oh, okay. This won't surprise you, but to uh, other people in the room who haven't met my cats, and no one will probably even care, but I'm just telling Steph, <laughs> it won't surprise you. You know, Tyson is kind of a wannabe bully and really pushy and a fat ass basically loves her food nobody shaming um yesterday when i got up she was walking on the bed prodding us meowing forcing us to get up and feed her i got up i walked out to their bowls saw loki and went to give her a good morning rub and Tyson just kept walking backwards, meowing, like headbutting my calves and then looking at the food bowls, telling me, where the fuck do you think you're going? What? Come on. Meow. Wouldn't let me pass. She was like See? that, you shall Attitude. not pass, cat. Yeah. Yeah, same with him. Attitude. I'll be making myself like a little snack and he's like, uh-uh. Not without me eating some. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the? And then he'll like barking and then he sits in the corner and he just like looks at you. I'm like, oh, but he's so it's cute. It's a whole process, right? Because you have to blend the food and everything. I mean, we already have it all set. But like, for example, he loves bread. 
So, like, of course, my, like, we have, like, all this bread. And every time I want to eat one just as a snack, he, like, looks at me. And then he starts, like, barking because he's like, hey, I love bread. You know I love bread. Give me bread. I'm like, you're spoiled. <laughs> you're so spoiled. You're so cute. He's so cute. So, Lucky likes bread. Tyson likes seaweed, like from sushi rolls. And... Oh, Loki likes New York cheesecake. It reminds me of a joke of, no, I don't want to come to your cat's birthday this weekend, you freak. My dog is getting married. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Neither of us care, but we're just waiting for our turn to talk about our pets. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's uh, take a few more questions and then let's wrap this up. I know I'm sure Steph is waiting to get back to do some work and Lucky is waiting to be fed through a straw. Um, <laughs> I have had so many sent through here, let's see. Greg H, have you ever shot with the Arpo 50 mil Summicron? Um, actually, I have, I have one as well. I don't make the, as many uh, YouTube donations as you, but I do also have that lens. Um, I also have it with a photodiox adapter, so it will autofocus on a Sony. It's ridiculously priced, but I think it may be the most beautiful 50 mil lens I've ever used. Um, Dale Berry, is it as bad in New York as it seems? Do you see an end to it all? It's, I'm in Japan, it's eerily calm, um, but he's closed his business until the 6th of May. Ah, <laughs> I just looked up and then saw a kangaroo kissing a dog. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm not a doctor or a health expert, so I can't say is it as bad as it seems, but I'm glad to see people are more and more taking it seriously. Uh, I mean, what can you say? 10,000 people have died in New York, I think, to date from the, the virus and businesses are shut. We are barely leaving the house, so it's a huge difference, you know, places that were usually packed out every day of the week are now little ghost towns with people skittishly avoiding each other. Um, but it has to be. If you compare Tokyo or Hong Kong or Singapore to New York, New York just isn't used to dealing with this kind of a thing. So the response was later, the spread was much worse. You know, I had a good friend of mine saying her friend took a flight to uh, Seoul in South Korea knowing that they would get caught in a two-week military quarantine, but after two weeks they could go into Seoul and then life is going on as normal, whereas in their home city in the United States everything was in lockdown, so they made that as a conscious choice. Those parts of the world are just more... Uh, they've sadly they've been through it with SARS and uh, swine flu and all of that kind of thing, bird flu. Um, like Hong Kong in January, everyone was wearing a mask, using hand sanitizer, being super careful, and they have had barely any cases. So you know, it obviously there's a, a parallel there. Um, Da, 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 da. Oh, this is a good one. So Matt 46 Veil, vale. when starting out as a photographer, would you recommend taking on every photo job you have access to, even though it isn't a genre that you want to pursue? Uh, I think that's actually a really useful question. I'm, I wish it had come earlier in the chat. Um, so, there's two parts to it. So I'd say flipping it on its head, I wouldn't take a paid job that you're not equipped to do. You know, if someone's asking you to shoot something that you don't have the skills to deliver on, I wouldn't take that. I wouldn't take someone's money unless you can be confident that you can deliver what you and they have agreed you're going to do. Having said that, once you are at that point, most creatives need to take the jobs that they get to make ends meet. 
you know, they need to do a bit of this and a bit of that to just pay the bills and stay afloat and not be going back to their corporate job. So, and you know, most photographers, I think in the world are doing a bit of web design or a bit of consulting or a bit of teaching or a bit of that to make ends meet. So the answer is broadly, yes. But the big qualifier is you really wanna keep track of where it is that you wanna go, what are your plans, what are your goals, short and long term, and don't lose track of that. Because if you want to be a documentary photographer traveling the world, telling important stories, but you shot a couple of weddings or bar mitzvahs and you were really good at it and got referred to all these friends and made all this money from it, it's very easy to 10 years later be specialized suddenly in weddings and bar mitzvahs because it pays the bills and it's not your passion. And then suddenly your photography job becomes the same as your accounting job and you're just doing it and it's you know a job rather than a passion. What about you guys? Do you sometimes you know get offered jobs that really aren't your interest and you do them anyway? Um I mean we do get a lot of like jobs. I mean I myself have a couple of side jobs and then Joey also have a couple of side jobs because uh, we believe that all of the content or basically everything that gets funneled through our school dropouts like profit wise it all goes back out into the production so that way if we do get any donations or patrons, it all goes straight back out to the fans because that's what they're paying for. As, so what does that mean? If you take a side yeah. job, that money goes into the pot? Uh, no, my mo the side jobs before it used to be um, because the company was new. So I would actually put in a percentage of it into the pot. But now because the company is like, you know, it's, it's better now after a couple of years. The side jobs actually help pay for my rent and all of my personal stuff now. So, uh -huh. yeah, but art school dropouts, we don't pay ourselves. Yeah. It just goes to making new productions. Nice. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to answer Greg's question. He asked something about marketing regarding escorts and nude models. What? I'm trying to look for it. Yeah, uh, how big is the model slash nude overlap for models with people doing escort type work? How big of an issue is LEO for this type of work? I don't know what LEO is, but there is a divide between escort models and nude models. It's two different types of work, so the marketing would be different. And um, if you want to reach out to these individuals, usually you could just find, I guess, websites. What is an escort or model? just uh they basically hang out around people and it's implied that there's sexual activities that goes on between them and the hired person and the divide is because a lot of nude models they don't want to see seem like escort models because that's really not what it is it's usually just a professional trait of hey i'm going to model for you nude and that's kind of it is but, this yeah, even a it's, photography it's issue? That sounds like that's a prostitute and a model. Is there really a gray area there? There is. Um, I mean, it happens still. Like, there are still escorts. Like, you know, sugar daddies kind of thing. It's kind of more along the lines of that. In the photography world? Yeah. Uh, I think he's just asking that he wanted to do photos for them for free to help with their marketing during this time. That's what it seemed like. Oh, there's people doing escorting and they need marketing photo video content for selling their services. I was wondering if they typically do both or is completely different. I don't think escort models have that, honestly. So this is, I think, a question aimed at Steph, but I would say Nothing necessarily wrong with prostitution. If it's in a place that's legal and it's done safely, that's fine. And if they're a professional, then they'll want marketing photos. But I don't think that's a question that Steph has any kind of expertise to speak <laughs> on. Um, that would be something maybe to ask to a an escort live chat. Yeah. 
or a webcam. And if you ever wonder, like, if something is going to be a problem with law enforcement, odds are you just shouldn't do it. I feel like this just took a really weird turn in the last couple of seconds. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's uh, Uh, nix that kind of commentary now. And Sean, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was also typing to you guys, so that's not your hard drive. Hard drive falling. <laughs> I'm also lost again. Oh, I was answering his question or his uh, comment in the chat because ah. I was like typing, and I guess people hear oh, it. Cl- ah, gotcha, gotcha. The gonk, 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 gonk. Yeah, I didn't think it was that loud. Wow, the conversation has just taken a weird, weird turn and not a bunch of questions that I want to address. So uh, shall we just wrap it up there, Steph? Yeah, I guess. (laughs) Oh, Lucky is 15. Yeah, he's 15. What is that actually in dog years? Have you done the math? No, I'm scared too. Uh, Well, 40 is the new 50. Or 40, 50 is new 40 or yeah. I thought 15 times 7 is what how old they are is that f- 105 years oh my god you've done the math already you're not that good <laughs> no I, I didn't 101 blogs is put 105 what uh. the heck? oh it's not really 7 90 ish 90 ish is still oh my god he's so old so you, that no wonder he breathes like that and it just feed me. He has a collapsed trachea. Mm. Man. Me. Oh, that's a good question. What are some of the biggest things you think will change in the photography industry in the coming 10 years? I mean, especially with the coronavirus too. Why, why are you guys coming out with all these big swinging questions at the end? Um, wow. Uh, next 10 years. So obviously, uh, actually, it would be interesting to, you know, when you look at, sometimes I do this and I take a look at the camera releases that have come out over the last 10 or 20 years and how they're reported at the time and how the new technology that now is outdated when it first came out, how it was reported and how they think it's going to impact the industry. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. But surely, if you look at the trend over the last 20 years, what will happen in the next 10 years, it's uh, device convergence. So you have fewer devices doing more things, smaller devices, uh, battery technology that allows you to have crazy computing processing power in smaller and smaller devices. Um, And if the trend continues, fewer and fewer well-paid professional photographers. You know, if you went back 10 years from now, not only has the number fallen away significantly, but the average income of the top 20% of photographers, I think, has also fallen away a lot. So, you know, I'm sure that's going to continue. There will still be the top 1%, but I assume the trend will continue. People are believing in robots. That's scary. Steph is a robot. She's a Cylon. Have you ever watched that? Hi. (laughs) Hello. How is everyone? Oh my God, that would be so creepy. That was her (laughs) crashing your hard drive. (laughs) (laughs) Is Robert still in the room? It's probably a bit too late for you, but if you are, thank you for everything this week. I've appreciated it, or over the previous week. Uh, Fembot. Have you seen Austin Powers? Steph? Yes, why? Or someone just thinks that you're a Fembot. Oh, God. It's just a female Mm -hmm. robot. There's so many other implications. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, okay. Any other last ones there we need to address one? Otherwise... How are you going to do... Oh, okay. I was like, do a video on your live stream setup. Actually, that's a good idea, considering, like, everybody has a lot of questions about your setup. Yep. 
as we said, uh, we'll, um, I'll do that one a bit later. Um, all right. I think that might be us. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for tuning in. And I did it again. I forgot to remind you guys, if you haven't already, send your time-themed photos in for Friday's ah. live chat. Um, we'll be going live at the same time, Friday night, uh, looking at time photos. And we've, I'm going to give away a copy of the Natural Light Masterclass that Steph and I filmed out in Vegas at the start of the year. And it should be really fun. So check it out, submit your shots, join us same time in four days time. And yeah, we'll look forward to it. Thank you to all of the donations. It was a bit crazy. Thank you to Steph for <laughs> tuning in. Most importantly, thank you to Lucky for waiting for dinner. Oh God, he's just sitting there. Judging. Yeah, he's like, what are you doing? Why are you talking to yourself? <laughs> and also thank you for the first super chat. I will try to find a decent Australian beer for Friday night. I'll do my best. Awesome. Um, so thank you guys. Have a great night. Have a great week. Thank you so much, Steph, for joining us. And I guess back to work and time for my yep. dim sum. <laughs> Man, I want dim sum. <laughs> Take it easy, mate. Bye, everyone.